think of Cumbria and you'll no doubt think of rugged fells, lakes, walking and Wordsworth. But there's one other thing that should immediately spring to mind. The curly Cumberland sausage. I've come to Sealfield Farm on the outskirts of Kendall to meet Peter Gott, pig farmer and butcher extraordinaire. Peter's from generations of farmers and he's passionate about his pigs and all things porcine. So Peter, how long have you been involved in farming? Uh, about 20 years, keeping yeah. every pigs and wild boar. And your dad also was involved in farming? My dad in the farm. and my mum, and uh, in fact my granddad kept a pub, and he kept Cumberland pigs, and he kept buff rocks and bard rocks, which were a type of poultry. Yeah. And uh, if you ever stopped in his pub, I mean this was in the 30s, yeah. you got bacon and eggs for breakfast, and you got ham and eggs for tea. <laughs> that was it? That's it, well it was functional <laughs> wasn't it? Absolutely. Farmers markets are a big thing for you aren't they? Well, I'm a farmer that's gone to market, and I react from consumer demand. So basically we do everything, the pigs, the process, the product, the market. Off you go. Basically our working week starts with, on a Monday we go to the slaughterhouse, yep. and then on a Tuesday we collect our carcasses, we bring them back, and Tuesday afternoon we start cutting up, Wednesday we manufacture, Thursday we pack everything for retail, and then Thursday night we go off to a market, Friday, Saturday we sell it, Saturday Sun night I come home. Sunday night I have a lay-in. Sunday morning I get up and feed my pigs again yeah. and the whole process starts, starts again. again. We put about 80, 90 hours a week in. And I have to say they look in fantastic condition. They're as happy as pigs in. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful to see pigs being raised in a truly traditional manner, outdoors, on a natural diet, without antibiotics or growth promoters. Peter's pigs have the space to do what pigs do best, that's roam, root and enjoy a stress-free life. <laughs> I'm trying to catch one. You bit me bum once. Did you see that? Look. In here, they're obviously mature. How long are they in this part for? It's quite. Uh, anyway, up to three or four months. I've got breeds here. I've got rare breeds. I've got middle white, which is one of our rarest breeds in the country and they've been crossed um, with British Lop, which is another rare breed, that's the yeah. white ones. Yeah, yeah. There's a ginger one there, that's Tamworth, and then the dark brownie ones, they're Iron Age. So these are all native breeds to this country, outdoor pigs, and they thrive outside in these conditions. But the total period of time that they spend on this farm before they go to the slaughterhouse is anywhere in excess of 28, 32 weeks. And if it's wild boar, two years. Do dinner, dinner, bed and breakfast for two years, so I'll tell you, take some doing. <laughs> what about all these sayings? I mean, you've got pig in a ginnel. Yeah. My mum used to say that, you couldn't stop a pig in a ginnel. Um, <laughs> in a place that you had bow legs. And that's right, right, that's right. You, can't, you, know, you couldn't stop a pig in a ginnel, that's right. That's yeah, yeah, right, yeah, my mum used to say that. Yeah. Um, pig in stupid. Pig in pig stupid. Well, we've grown up with all this, pig in ignorant, your, your house of pigsty. How about the pig in a poke? Pig in a poke? Well, that's if you went to market and you bought a, a suckling pig and you got home and you opened the bag and you never looked before you went, out jumped a cat. And that's when you let the cat out of the bag and you actually bought a pig in a poke. That's where these, these sayings come from. Well, I have to say, they look fantastic. Pig-headed? Pig-headed. I've, I've met some people like that. Yeah, I know a few like that. Director. <laughs> <laughs> Peter knows all of his pigs by name. Let's say eight. Blaze. So how does he reconcile that? to taking them to slaughter. In order to give them a good life and support the herd, this is a means to an end. And, you know, they've had a good innings. I mean, they've had a natural life. Yep. And basically, they're producing good food. So I feel justified, but I've definitely got one or two old sows that I don't, I don't like the day when they have to go, you know, to the pie in the sky, as it were. But it's a means to an end, and they support the whole herd. And, but, it, is, and it is that yeah, process, yeah. I suppose, at the end of the day. No one knows exactly when sausages were first made and eaten, but they have certainly been around for thousands of years and most likely originated in Iran or Iraq and are considered the earliest convenience food of civilization. Right, Pete, in your opinion, what makes a good Cumberland sausage? Uh, good meat to start with. Yep. Um, nice thick cut, thick texture, chopped, very, very thick chopping. And hang on a minute, and Mrs. Beaton, <laughs> she says in here, page 560, yep. no rind or gristle. And the final, final bit, a minimum, in my opinion, yep. of 90% meat. High meat content. 
Don't forget, I'm a farmer. I'm no, not no. a cereal grower. I want to put plenty of meat in there. 90%. Here we go, look. <laughs> White pepper, sage, mace. Well, I use a little bit of nutmeg. Which is the inner part of the mate, yep. Salt. That's it, nothing else. That's it. That's this week's anyway. <laughs> this is the intestine of the pig. Just natural. Yeah, yeah, natural skins. I mean, I'm showing you in slow motion. Don't forget, we'd, we'd have to get a move on. But that is fantastic. How many pounds of sausage do you make a day? Go on here, you have a go, yeah. Which way? That way? Clockwise. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go on and help feed the skin. You better get a move on, we've got to get to market. <laughs> <laughs> it's a five hour drive, isn't it? Hey. Hey, look at this. Why a kind of sausage always cooked or served curly? That's in a ring. Personally, I think too idle to tear and tie knots. <laughs> Is that you or Cumberland's? Hi, Christine. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. So you're Peter's better half. I certainly am. <laughs> and For my sins. <laughs> and you were in this game, weren't you, at the start? No, not at all. No, no. So how did you get involved in this? Uh, well, I met Peter and look what he's got me doing now. <laughs> I baked a pie one week and he said, how many of them can you make in a week? Right. And that was it. And how would you make now? Uh, anything from 200 up to 900. One or two of my girls have mentioned that you've got a lovely bottom. Really? They've voted you the best bottom that's been here for quite some time. And we all think Fern's a very lucky girl. <laughs> no, no, I'm a lucky bloke. That's yes, what she should be. she's beautiful, but we wish we were her. <laughs> <laughs> not only that, but you can cook. <laughs> and it's not just sausages Peter makes, as he puts it. So the only thing that's wasted on a pig, do you know what it is? The squeak. <laughs> we just haven't been able to bottle it yet. <laughs> I'm so sure you're nice. working on it. He is also an accomplished curer of meats, wild boar, hams, smoked bacon, salami and Cumberland speck. Now, that is one meaty sausage. Bang on. 